Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my Chanel. <laughs> I mean, channel. This is clearly not Chanel. It's Mugler, darling. Oh my God! So speaking of Thierry Mugler, we are going to the Fashion Institute of Technology today to visit some of their fashion archives. I'm just excited to see the pieces and, and hear from experts at FIT about these clothes. Should we talk about the pieces that you pulled? Sure. Actually, yeah, let's start with the jumpsuit. Let's go in order. Let's start with the jumpsuit. Oh my God. What's fascinating to me is, particularly in the 79 collection, how much he was emphasizing the shoulders. Yes. Which is such an 80s thing, which is such a thing that we think about the big, broad shoulders in the 80s, but in the 70s, he was going. Mugler and Montana, too, were doing shoulders and black leather, and that really kind of yeah. amazing, phallic, powerful woman. What's interesting for me about just some Mugler elements that I see is this asymmetrical, the snaps, this shoulder moment is just utterly in, in exciting for me. And it feels like this is this moto moment yeah. that I don't know if anyone else is doing it, but now you see it. Yes. The innovation. I it's think when you. And before that, even armor. Yeah, he was such an innovative designer. Obsessed. Talk to me about leather at this, because he was criticized a lot in the 80s for using leather and PVC, and they thought it was sort of gay and gauche. The customers loved it. What, where was leather in fashion in general in, in 1979? Well, it's really associated with leather sex, with gay leather sex, and with S&M. It is in fashion, but only in limited ways. Things like black leather jackets had long been in fashion ever since Saint Laurent picked up on that. But Mugler and Montana also were really criticized for doing this kind of S&M look for women mm -hmm. uh, on the runway. I don't think this is S&M now, but I guess in the Back 70s, then, when they were it really felt really very S&M. And I mean, exactly. he used PVC and he used, you know, like latex. There's all these things that I, I'm, I'm a student. I'm, a, I'm, I'm still learning. We can maybe go to the LeMay piece now. Seeing this on a, on a mannequin or seeing this on a model is just so everything. You would think that you may be a 1930s film yes. or something. Yes. And so there's a lot of, I feel like, lots of 40s inspiration. Obviously, um, the, the wasp waist is, uh, is um, new look, mm -hmm. you know, Dior's new look. So there's, so she definitely looked back, but he was always looking forward at the same yeah. time. So there's something simultaneously retro and futuristic about this. Yes. The pleating, the ruching, oh my goodness. Well, the silver is very futuristic, as that was interpreted back then. Yes. I mean, everybody was thinking the future was going to be silver. It's kind of, I guess, because of Andy Warhol and the idea of kind of sort of space age machinery, computer, te technocratic things. Um, but as you say, the rest of it is cut in a way which is very feminine and draped. and even reminds me a little bit of ancient Egypt in the way that mm. it's, it's pulled on the body. It's interesting, when I look at Mr. Mugler's um, sort of futuristic take, it, it evokes late 1960s space age, yes. Um, yes. Pierre Cardin and Paco Rabanne, right. particularly in Mr. Mugler's inspiration of, of the future. And yes. his future was sort of looking back at the late 1960s. Yes. Which isn't that, I mean... A lot, of, I mean, almost all visions of the future look back at one decade or another. They're stitching here, and so this comes out. This is an element that we see, what well, we see it here. This. That's element, right. That we really see, and I we see it a lot in the blazers as well. Yes. This element that kind of just gives you even more sort of lateral volume. That's right. Set of these move layers is super exciting because no one else is really doing any of this. Yes. And you see early elements that will become signatures of his later on. Yes. Let's talk about the blazer. I have this blazer in red. What excited me about this when I saw it in your catalog is that I had no idea what collection it was from. The diagonals are interesting too, mm -hmm. I mean, and the, and the curves. It's really, it's cut very carefully, but in a way that really makes it sort of curve over the body. It's a very, very body conscious jacket. The, it's, this is he, the way he would infuse black. Sometimes this would be mm -hmm. this would be velvet um, in some other collections. But it is the way that it shapes the body that just got me so excited when I 
you know, 30 years ago when I discovered Mugler and then discovered the blazers, how the, the cinch waist that was very straight up and down yeah. in the 90s, I had no curves and Mugler could give you curves. So yes. you could hug your curves, but also could give you could curves. Could give you curves as well, which would yeah. you, of course, could do that as well. But his were under foundations. And this one is really just the tailoring that does it. Yeah. Can we look at the back of this? Just this little, this little moment here. It's just, and there's just something that makes it really special and unique with the, um, the black trim. It really reminds you of how defining each of those extremities is so erotic in itself. So like, okay, we're dividing the head from the body. Okay, we're dividing the hand from the wrist. We're stockings. Here we're dividing the thigh, right here. Mm. Each of those markers is though, I hate to say it, but it's almost like a butcher's diagram. You're showing different parts of the body, like it would show different parts of the... A butcher's diagram. I hadn't thought about it. It's and that's kind of a gruesome in a way. Sexual way. way. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it in a sexual way. I hadn't thought about it in terms of a butcher. But there were, um, particularly, um, a new piece I just gave, I think you just got, um, in, in his 1998 collection, where he had um, the exposed stockings yes. with the garter. Yes. In um, all 1998. That. And, but then the pocket in those famous Helmut Newton photos, so there's a pocket that has a similar garter, then there's a garter in the stocking. So and the, um, it really is, it really is. Let's go to Les Atlantis. I'm obsessed with this. This collection is so iconic. This is such a beautiful collection. It's so iconic. And we have a few, we have a number of pieces from this collection now. Talk to me about Les Atlantis and this spin dress and what you know about it. Again, we have LeMay. We have LeMay. We have LeMay, which is that sort of the sexy shy. The shine is really important in fetishes because it draws the eye. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the lining and you know, the sort of, sort of pink, and talking about pink parts of the body, like lips and nipples and genitals. It's a very sexual color. Um, I have never thought about this collection in a sexual <laughs> way before. I love that you go there. And then yes. it's, it's the way the body is shaped, it becomes almost like a kind of an insect or an ocean creature or something. It's, well, it's like an Atlantis, it would be an exactly. ocean creature, yes. And you used it as a mermaid in I did show. it in a show I did called Fairy Tale Fashion. She mm. represented a mermaid. Mm. And then the next dress we'll look at was also on Fairy Tale Fashion. Mm. Oh my God, I've never, this. <sighs> oh. It's art. It's just, it's really and truly art. It's where art meets fashion. I mean, how can you look at this and not just understand this is art? This is high art. Um, and I think the last piece. The last piece. Mm. <laughs> What's interesting to me about this is that it harkens back a little bit to the bustier from Les Atlantis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just have to do this. Whoa! Oh. Yeah, what that's fabulous. I mean, Mugler loved a reveal. So, so I, but mine isn't lined in red. When I found this, I found this bustier after I lost that dress at auction. Yeah. I was like, this feels like a consolation. And it wasn't, it was really inexpensive. Um, the jewelry is Mugler as well. So, Tell, what do we know about this piece um, from 97, fall 97? I really want to know because obviously. I used this in fairy tale fashion to represent the witch in The Wizard of Oz because she was a fire witch, mm. but I wanted her to be chic. So that's why in the film and of course in the book, she's killed with water because she's a fire witch. Mm. So I was like, how can I represent this subtly and beautifully? And this to me looked like flames. And then you just get that little hint of red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is very exciting. This is very exciting. I loved it so much. It, I, it, I, when I saw this in your catalog, I was just like, ah! <laughs> you I really just really bought this. I was like, I literally just bought this. Okay. My. Nice. This is the first fitting since she's altered it. So sometimes the first fitting things aren't quite right. Ooh. Things aren't quite right. Actually, it should be unzipped a little bit. And then the collar up to feel like Iman. That medicine collar is so great. Oh my God. I, oh. The purple's pretty good, Matt. The match is insane. The matches and more. Yeah. 
My Taylor Morgan foot. My Taylor Morgan foot. You, she's changed my life. I would not be able to wear this without Morgan. I, I, I want to wear this out, get out of there. <laughs> Just a fitting an FAT of my with my hair with my oh, hair. Yes. Oh God, is it found off. Alrighty. Oh, heaven. Jesus fucking Christ. Interesting, the stitching here mm -hmm. that we first saw in 1979, mm -hmm. um, and this is 19, spring, summer 1988. So again, that detail that just kind of like gives you a little something. Look at the hell. This makes me think I could stop collecting Mugler, except I want that laser lantern strap. Um, <laughs> we shortened this skirt considerably to match how it looks on the runway. And this suit, it was just, it's like a dream. And I actually have a number of suits from this collection. Um, I think, I think we finally got it. Right, except, yeah. Wow, I love this. And we're getting a hat, the hat, it was shown with the hat. I'm getting a different hat from the collection. Maybe we're getting it made by um, this wonderful um, hat maker named Sarah. This is this is the right proportion, though. This is fabulous. It's professional but sexy. What would you say, Valerie, about this? I think this it looks like for a reverse schoolgirl outfit. It looks fabulous. You are a freak, <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Is that all you have for That's, me? Uh, yeah, I have more for you at my house. That, this is just I more just brought up things today. More than enough. Oh my gosh. Thank you. One of the great joys for me being a collector is um, doing research. I feel like so new to being a Mugler collector and there's just so many things that I have to learn and uncover and um, this is part of that journey.